So in this lesson, we're going to be taking lots of that fun JavaScript code we've been learning, and we're going to have more fun by actually applying it to a real web page. Um, I've got this kind of really basic web page here, and we're going to be using JavaScript to real time make some changes to it. So here's kind of some of the HTML elements that I have going on. I've got a couple paragraph tags, an H4, I have a UL with some LIs. So let's use JavaScript to real time change this page. I'm going to go to my console. I've got it pretty big and blown up because we're going to be doing this whole lesson in the console. So the first thing to know about how you interact with your HTML document here is there's a document object on the page. So you can see this is an actual JavaScript representation of my web page. It's called the DOM, the Document Object Model. Um, and that's basically how you access your HTML and CSS through JavaScript. And so this document object model has an API for it. So it has some API methods we can access. I can go document dot get elements by tag name. So you notice I did elements plural here because we can have more than one element with the same tag name. And let's grab all of our paragraphs. P. And I just need to enter a string in here. It can be single or double quotes. I'm going to look for anything with a P tag. And there you go. I have an array of two elements. I have my first paragraph tag and my second paragraph tag. How about we look for anything with an H1? There you go. There's my H1. So it gives me an array. Um, and so then I can actually do what we would do. So let's look at my P. I can go array zero, which is going to give me only the first one in the array. Um, or I can actually save these as a variable. I can go var p tags equals document dot get elements by tag name p there you go so now p tags the variable equals these two awesome and I can go first p tag equals p tags zero so now my first p tag variable I can pass these around just like I can any other um, variable so now anytime I go first p tag it's always going to point to this paragraph. Sweet. Let's look at some of these other selector methods we got going on here. So I got document, document dot uh, get elements. Well, you can actually just see them if you type get right there. You've got get elements plural by class name, and that would be elements by. There we go. And that'll just be the class name you want. I have a class name done. That's this guy right here. You see, I have one li with done. Um, you can get element singular by ID since there is only one element allowed with each ID. Um, I think this, yeah, this UL is called checklist. There you go. So that's that guy with ID of checklist. Um, and that's kind of pretty much it. Now, if you are using anything IE 8 or newer, definitely if you're using IE 9 or newer, there's a great one called documents um, dot query selector which is awesome because then you can just use any selector you want just as you would with CSS. So I can go dot done, anything with a class of done. I can do a hashtag and look for anything with an ID, hashtag checklist. There we go. And document query selector will always just give me the first thing that comes up. It will not search the entire document. It'll just give me the first one it finds. If I want everything, then I go query selector all, and then I'll just search for P tags. And that will just give me any paragraph tags right there in an array. So those two are cool. Um, and you know, I mentioned that you can't use this in all browsers. One of the quirks to JavaScript, just like CSS, is newer browsers support newer features. Older browsers do not support them. So there's a great website called caniuse.com. You can see right here, I typed in query selector. And I can see what all browsers support what I'm wanting to use. Now, the only one that has partial support here is IE8. It's not going to work with CSS3 selectors because IE8 does not support those. And also HTML5 uh, tags, you know, tags like uh, main and footer, you know, might have some trouble with that. So you'll always want to test your JavaScript code if you don't get a full green light uh, on the browsers that you're supporting. Stinks, I know, and it's always IE, that's a problem, but hey, what are you going to do? That's the internet. Things change. So there's basically your document searching methods. So let's do some fun stuff here. Um, let's say I want to change the HTML for this paragraph. Um, did I call that first P tag? Yeah. So first P tag still points to this paragraph. So now I can go first P tag dot enter HTML. Um, and I can actually change the inner HTML equals new paragraph. 
There you go. It's not really a new paragraph, but new paragraph content. There you go. If I could spell content and new paragraph content. There you go. So real time, I just changed it. Let's say I want to actually add a new element inside of there. Um, new paragraph strong content. I can actually type text and it will turn it into HTML tags, which is pretty cool. Um, I can also do stuff with classes. So let's look at that li right there that's got done. So let's call that ver li equals document dot. Man, I am not typing document very well tonight. You're just going to have to bear with me on that one. Document dot query selector. I'm only going to do query selector because I just want the first one with a done class. So there we go. So li now equals that guy. So I can go li dot class name. And there you go. My class name is done. Uh, so let's go class name equals nothing. So now my class equals nothing. I have no classes assigned and the strike through is gone. So let's go li class name. Let's add done back. There we go. Let's add a second class name to it. Done also done. Let's say I have another class called also done. It didn't do anything because that there's no CSS for that. Uh, let's say I want to set it back to just done. Uh, let's say I, I want to take I have an amount of classes. I don't know how many classes I have. Let's say class name is done, also done, also. So let's say li.classname has a lot of classes. I don't exactly know what all they are. I just want to add a new one to it. Uh, I can go li.classname. Let me go ahead and clear this out here. Li class name equals li.classname. So let's take let's say it equals what it already is, plus let's add a space and add a new one. Special. There we go. So now it's going to say, hey, let's, it now equals what we equaled before plus this more stuff. So now that's my class list right there. Pretty cool. class name equals nothing. All classes are gone again. So that's, that's pretty nice. It's kind of a pain in the rear to do a lot of stuff with classes beyond that. If you want to do a lot of adding, removing classes, like let's say I wanted to just remove also done. Um, let me actually copy and paste this and add this back in. Li dot class name equals. There you go. Let's say I just want to remove also done. Well, there's kind of like some hacky ways you can do it. I can go li dot class name equals li dot class name dot replace. Let's say I'm, I want to replace also done with which is a second argument. Replace is kind of cool. You can do, you do replace on anything that's text strings. Um, I'm going to replace this with nothing. So there we go. So now I have an extra space in there, but that's still going to work in browsers. It's, it's kind of hacky in that it's not clean. Because uh, then if I added another class and removed it 10 times, I get a whole lot of spaces in there. Uh, but that's going to work. And so if you want to do a lot more besides just a little bit of adding and changing, you want to look into jQuery. I've got a full jQuery course. jQuery makes it really easy for you to do a lot of this stuff. Um, and I'll leave it at that. I'll put some links for jQuery out there. Uh, let's look at maybe one more thing. Uh, let's go ahead and look at, okay, so there's this class, there's this class, uh, there we go, class list thing. Um, you can see if I do class list, I actually have a list of all my classes. One, two, three. It's an actual array. Now, if I go to can I use and type class list, it's kind of depressing. Um, it's not supported for IE8 or IE9. It's not fully supported with IE10 or even IE11. So that's coming. Class list is going to be really cool because you can do stuff like class list add um, new. So now I can look at li class list and it's got new. Super cool. I can go class list dot remove. Let's take new away. Um, and now if I look at class list, new is gone. So Better support is coming to JavaScript natively, but if you want to do it in the meantime, you're going to want to use a library. If you're using jQuery, it's super easy. Um, I would just do something like this. I'd look up my uh, class for done, and I do add class uh, new, and that's how jQuery works. I'll leave it for that. I've got a whole series on jQuery, which you'll love. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, there's 
you know, that's how you'll select stuff. That's how you'll add stuff. Uh, you can also navigate up. Oh, let's look at that li again. So I can go li dot parent no parent element um, and element, and that's going to be the ul that it's a part of. So let's say if I want ul li dot parent parent element dot parent element, that's going to be going up the tree some more. So now I'm at main. And you can see main has the UL in it, and that UL has the LI in it. Let's say I'm on this LI, and I want to find the this guy right here. Well, then I can go li dot parent element uh, dot children. There you go, dot children, and that's going to be all the children of my parent element. Now, once again, children's got a quirk to it. It works safely. IE nine plus, IE eight back can have some quirks. Um, but that works really well. So then I can go li parent element children zero, and that's going to be that apples guy. So let's say I want to change you equals, uh, what will you be? Frank. There you go. So now Frank, oranges, bananas, and watermelon. So that's enough on selectors for now. In the next video, we're going to cover how you can actually listen to what the user does and change stuff real time. So hope this lesson helped you out.